this video is about the new 2018 BC5 models and I'm trying this out with the new camera so if it doesn't turn out very good I apologize. It's also well over 100 degrees out here in Arizona so I got some fans uh, running so I apologize for any background noise. One of the first things you're going to notice on the new 28 BC line is the MDDS system, manual dial damper system, and this is one of the best manual dial damper systems we uh, have on any of our machines. Very well built. That's one of the new features. Another new feature is the new maintenance door on the back of the roaster. Just to recap, uh, we have uh, the, some new features on the BC5 that stand out above all the rest. We've got a maintenance door with the thumb uh, screws, real easy to open up. Just don't lose those thumb, th thumb screws if you can. And then uh, you can quickly access the uh, inside of the uh, roaster so you can grease the bearing real easily. And as you can see, it's uh, set up so it's real easy to get to. If you have to flip on the switch on the uh, um, circuit breaker or any simple maintenance it's real easy to do with this new uh, uh, utility or maintenance door and right now that's an exclusive feature of the BC5 which is one of the best five to six pound roasters on the market right now. Another great feature of the BC5 and all the 2018 BC's even our little teeny uh, BC1 is we switched over to a manual dial damper system that turns counterclockwise from 0 to 10 to open up and allow airflow to give you precise airflow. Uh, these are really high-end built uh, uh, manual dampers. We are firm believers in detail and so as you can see right here on the BC5 we've added a really nice uh, airflow chamber here or airflow gateway or door or latch whatever you want to call it it allows you to do airflow tests on the machine to make sure that they're getting adequate airflow it also gives you access into the side of the neck uh, easily if you need to uh, do any cleaning the quality of the doors have been improved uh, uh, as well as all the handles and knobs if you look down to the cooling tray if I can get that down there um, latch you can see that uh, we've improved the quality of that if you look over to the uh, control for the uh, needle needle nose uh, valve for the gas we've improved it by putting a high-end steel metal one on and it uh, you feel like you have a lot more precision over those so these are just some of the features that we continue to develop the uh, BC line to be the best on the market We're going to take you through a test with the new 2018 BC5. I'm roasting today uh, three pounds of Nicaraguan coffee. Uh, we've already described to you briefly some of the new features of the BC5. Um, I think we call it the BC5MD manual damper. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take you through a roast. Uh, so basically, uh, to get started, uh, let's do it. One of the big differences, since we have the manual dial damper, is you now, uh, just to get started, you can play around with this as you develop your art. Because you basically now have not only an electronic uh, air flow control, but you also have the manual dial damper. But to, until you get comfortable with the machine, we recommend you use the manual dial damper because it's a lot more precise. And go ahead and turn the hot air volume up to 100%. Uh, as you can see, we've preheated the, the roaster somewhat. I've let it drop down a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, uh, just like with all, all BC roasters, to turn it on, you hit the power button, the baking button, which is the igniter, the timer button turns the timer on and off, the reset button on the timer resets it, the cooling turns on the cooling fan, 
the mixing turns on the mixing arms. So now that we've got our gas hooked up, this is a gas uh, uh, roaster, it's an LPG or propane model. Your, the KPA settings are going to be different on a natural gas model since natural gas only goes up to about 1.75 to 2.0 uh, KPA. So basically I've got my uh, manual dial damper set at about 3 to start it up. I'm going to hit the igniter and I've got the gas already lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, turn the KPA up to 2, let it pre up uh, pre uh, heat to my charge point which is going to be real quick since the roaster is already pretty much hot enough on the inside and then when I get ready to charge the beans I will uh, reset the timer and so my typical charge point is around 350 and I like to be at a true 350 it doesn't have to be at 350 some charge as low as 320, others as high as 400, some even go higher than that. So I'm, re I'm resetting my timer, I'm charging my three pounds of Nicaraguan coffee, and now you're going to see the uh, bean temperature drop pretty dramatically because of the, uh, you know, you just put some 80 degree beans into the drum, so it's going to a bottom out there and usually that bottoms out in no, no more than two minutes usually a minute and a half sometimes less than that in Arizona it may be even less than that as our temperatures today are well over a hundred degrees in my shop while this is going through some of the process I, I thought I'd take a little bit of time and incorporate some uh, maintenance uh, tips as well into the uh, um, video Okay, just to recap, uh, we're now at a minute and 20 seconds. It's uh, about ready to bottom out here or turn around, yep, uh, at about 220 degrees. I've got the uh, drum speed set at 50, which is 50% of the motor speed, not 50 RPM. Okay, it bottomed out at about a one minute and 38 seconds, right at about 220 degrees, and now it's starting its climb. I'm going to watch really closely the rate of rise because I may uh, have too much gas on that. I've got it set at 2 kPa. I've got the uh, hot air at 3, the drum speed at about 50. But this never do maintenance while you're while you're roasting. But uh, never do maintenance while your uh, machine is plugged in. But I'm just going to mention some things to you. Some people have asked what kind of cleaner do we use on the. Uh, uh, stainless steel housings. All we use is a window cleaner and on the uh, mat housings we tend to go back and forth in this direction to remove, uh, we spray the chemical on while it's unplugged, never inside the machine. You can also spray it onto your uh, terry cloth and then uh, go back and forth and that tends to remove uh, all the fingerprints. In Arizona, everything dries so fast, especially when it's over 100 degrees out here. So sometimes we get streaks when we do that. But generally speaking, if you're in a normal climate, you won't have that. Getting back to our roasts, I feel that the uh, um, KPA may be a little high, so I'm going to bump it down to 1 and 3 fourths. And I'm going to leave the airflow as is on 3. Another important thing is with the manual dial dampers, really with all pipes, but especially with the addition of the manual dial dampers, whether it be on a BC roaster or especially on a uh, Phoenix roaster because their manual dial damper is somewhat different internally, it's good to every month or so take apart the back chaff unit and clean this out completely, even the vacuum out with the shop vac. Airflow is, as I've mentioned, if you've watched many of my videos and I preach from the rooftops, is the life of your coffee roaster. And one of the great new features about the BC5, let me zoom in on that, one of the great new features is the airflow, uh, um, I don't know what you want to call that, gateway, doorway, latch. Uh, one thing you can do uh, is uh, 
when you're not doing a roast is turn on the airflow, put a lighter up to that and turn the damper, maybe start it at zero and turn it up and find out the different points where it pulls the flame in at maybe a 45 degree angle where it pulls the flame in most of the way and then where it actually causes the flame to go out. And as you turn that your damper up, it should do that, indicating that uh, your uh, uh, airflow is pretty clear. But you should still, every month or so, clean out your pipes. My goal generally is to try to reach 335 in five to seven minutes, which is uh, where the drying phase ends and you now start to go into the uh, um, mallard phase and so we did that in a little little past five and a half minutes and so now i'm going to focus more on the browning of my roast and i'm going to take you up to the front of the roaster uh, where we'll test uh, get some tests with the trier spoon one thing i've noticed with this bean is it's really got a high chaff and so i bumped up the airflow to six to get some of that chaff out because when i came over here to look it was uh really loaded with chaff. Most of that chaff has been pulled out since then. But I feel my rate of rise is still a little bit high. We've gone into first crack. It's 387 degrees at seven and a half minutes. So I'm actually going to bump back my uh, KPA to about one and a quarter because these roasters have a lot of power. And uh, right now my airflow is at 435 my beans are at 397 at 7 minutes 50 seconds. I'm bumping my uh, drum speed up to 60. And because it's going into a full crack, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump off the gas completely and just let it coast its way through because it's really going into first crack fast. A lot faster than I expected. So here we are at 8 minutes, 15 seconds, 410 degrees on the beam, 429 on the uh, uh, hot air. And because I bumped that hot air up to 6 and I uh, actually uh, cut off the gas, the hot air is actually dropping. And because it's bringing in a little bit more cooler air, it slowed down the rate of rise uh, during this roasting phase, which is what I want because I want to uh, bring out some uh, nice features in the uh, beans between the 410 and 430 uh, mark, and I didn't want it to race through that, which this roaster has the power to do. I'm actually bumping the airflow up to seven. We are at 425 degrees, nine minutes, three seconds. That's on the beam. The hot air is at 400, or, yeah, 414. I'm about ready to let these go. I, I like the way they look. A little bit more smoke in the drum than what I want, so I'm bumping that up to eight. I'm turning on the cooling tray. It's four, I'm sorry, nine minutes, 25 seconds, 430 degrees. And this was three pounds of uh, Nicaragua. And let me get a better picture for you. The lighting in here is not that great. So in nine and a half minutes, we had no problem doing three pounds of Nicaragua, bringing it up to 430 degrees. Um, I think if we were to do five to six pounds, which is where this maxes out, we got guys doing six pounds. As you can tell, even with the mixing arm raising the the cooling, the beans up on the cooling tray, you could easily get another two, two and a half. Some guys have even pushed three pounds more for a total of six pounds. Uh, um, on a BC and have done it in 12 to 14 minutes. Um, so there you are. Uh, basically with the BC it's the same process. You've just got more control over it now with all the new features. I hope you like this video and uh, why not grab one of these? we got more coming in stock soon. Thank you. Just a word on these smoke filters. Uh, they allow me to do roasting inside my shop without exhausting um, the smoke out. And in some cases, for people, they don't want their smoke blowing around their neighborhood or their uh, business area. As you can see, I've turned on the machine and it's greatly reduced the smoke. I'm going to shut it off for a second and show you what happens uh, when it's off. So here it is with the smoke off. And I'm trying to do everything at once, so I'm not doing a very good job at anything. but. 
I'm turning it back on and you'll see how quickly it will eliminate the smoke. And this is the uh, double uh, ion system. Mm -hmm. 